6 p.m. Look at this view. Right, it's day seven. Day seven? Yeah, day seven. Sunday. I've just finished my third treatment for the day. Jesus, look at these. Look at these tan lines. God, I've got to stop wearing tank tops. I'm just going down to the beach to find some shade just to talk about uh, what's going to be in vlog number two. I'm trying to get in so you can see, you know, where actual the vitiligo is. So maybe if I zoom a little bit, let me see if this works. Um, so hopefully you can see, so going further here, this, here's the vitiligo here on my face, uh, or one part of my face. And uh, you can see the, the colour tone. As I'm starting to go darker here, this is becoming quite a lot more obvious, this bit. And this is probably the biggest bit on my face, which I didn't actually know I had. I knew I knew I had a tiny bit under my beard, but I didn't actually know it had gotten this bad. So it was a, it was a little bit of a, a shock when I first you know, had the had the shave at the barbers and I could see that underneath there. So I'm definitely trying to focus on getting this this repigmented um this this trip in, in Jordan. So hopefully uh ho hopefully it improves a bit. Um, just also around my eyes as well. So like I said previously, before I came out to Jordan the first time, oh, this flies. Before I came out to Jordan the first time, uh, I had it, I had it pretty much all. It came out quite far down here as well, and came round here, um, and pretty much the same on the other side as well. Um, and it's filled in, it filled in loads the first time, so it came right in. So it's it, it, pretty much all the pigment was back around here. It was just some of the eyelids and stuff that hadn't come back. So. I mean, I'm not. I'm shutting my eyes now, and I'm going to move the camera in closer. Um, maybe, maybe you can see the the, the colour, the, the difference in colour. I'm, I'm not sure until I look back over the footage a bit later on. Um, but yeah, so uh, as those places like just around my lips, around here, uh, and on. I think there's some on this side a little bit around here as well. Okay, so actually getting into this video, the title's called Vitiligo Friends. Uh, I met. Kim, uh, who's in this video, uh, about two about two years ago, after I came back from Jordan the first time, and I noticed her on the London Underground, um, and could see that she had vitiligo. I think the story is actually quite a nice story. So uh, I recorded this. It was the first thing I recorded before I came out here. Was was this video? You you'll notice. <laughs> Hopefully, it makes sense. It was it was quite hard to edit uh, because we just messed around for the for the whole video, and we drank uh, a, an amount of red wine. You know, and the reason the reason I kind of wanted to publish this this video is Kim is like a great example uh, of someone that has vitiligo in quite obvious places. It's on her hands, it's on her knees, it's on her elbows, um, and she really just embraces it and just forgets about it. Um, she doesn't let it bother her. So although the video is quite light-hearted, uh, I I really think. It, she makes some really, really valid points in it, um, and uh, I'd want to share that with you. So, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will see you in the next one. Right, go on then. Three, two, one. Welcome to... Three, two, one, go. Welcome to Simon's Vitiligo vlog number two. What? Are, are we a couple? <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> right, so the Kim and Simon show. How do, how do we meet? The Kim and Simon show. <laughs> yeah, I'm coming to Vitiligo. I mean, I'm coming to I'm coming to Vitiligo. Yes, definitely not drunk. <laughs> definitely not drunk. <laughs> not. I'm coming to Georgia. I'm just happy, man. I'm glad. Okay. Great. So we're gonna tell the story, yeah? Yes. So. <sighs> <laughs> it was a warm summer's day. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it was not a fairy tale. <laughs> it, is it? it is a fairy tale. Okay, all right. It is a fairy tale. Okay, all right. Okay. And um it, no, to be fair, it was really hot. Yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was really, a really hot. Really hot. It was really hot, hot day. and it was sweating on the on the district line. Yeah. But bear in mind, for people that people actually on the blog that are, well, on the blog or on YouTube that are watching this, we don't that some people don't know where, where we are and where we where we live. Yeah, so we're, we're not we're, really friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I paid her to be here. Yeah, so we we were both we both live and work in London. You know, and London has probably like eight million people in it now. You know, probably more now. Is that a guess or do you bring in that stuff from somewhere? Wikipedia maybe? I don't know. So I was one out of eight million people on the same train <laughs> as number two out of eight out of eight million people. And yeah. it was a commute back from work, it was really hot, it was really stuffy, it was packed on the district line. 
um, and I was standing up and eventually the seat became available and it so happened to be opposite this fine young gentleman you see before you and I pulled out my book even though I didn't notice him at the time so he says, well so I say, you say different anyway, that's his story <laughs> <laughs> Then obviously the seat became free in front of me. You came, she came over and sat sat in front of me. Well, um, it's it's just, right. So vitiligo is a sensitive issue, right? So mm -hmm. you saying, oh hi, excuse me, do you mind me approaching you? Do you have vitiligo? And I'd met you. You were very, you said it in a very polite way, and you approached me in the kindest way possible. But when there's because like, I was because people, I was people like especially when you're on the district line, like we were sat on those two by two seats that face each other, and we had like these two strangers next to us, and yeah. they were just like looking over like. Yeah, and unless you live in London, you realise that, you know, any of these big cities and the public transport, talk to nobody people. talks to any, it, it, like, nobody talks to anyone. The fact that we were talking to each other... Do you I not get to know how loud Simon's voice is, so imagine that really <laughs> Pat Train talking about really sensitive issue. I mean, I was like, who is this? Guy? I mean, that's, that's good, I'm glad, I'm glad I brought you on. That's okay, thanks a lot. Oh, mind not to bring you out once in a while. They'll get to know, right? Hi, yeah. audience! Yeah, so Kim, Kim comes and sits opposite me, uh, and it's probably worth mentioning at this point that uh, I just got back from Jordan, the, the, obviously the first time round. Um, I'd, I'd had great success when I first went out to Jordan. I'd lost a lot of the pigment round, round my eyes. Now you couldn't really see it on me because I'm pretty white. But when, when I was out there, it, I, I saw really, really good repigmentation on my eyes, and, and I really wanted to, to, um, you know, my face was my focus point. I don't really, I didn't really matter about anywhere else. I do have it in some other places, but my face was the was the, the key place that I wanted to try and maintain and just make sure I could try and get some, some pigment back there. And anyone that's been to, been to Jordan or that's done UVB treatments knows that you, uh, you generally, uh, the most common thing is to hyperpigment first. So the, the skin goes incredibly dark before it returns to the normal, the normal skin color. So essentially it looked like I'd been in a fight. I had two really, really dark eyes, almost black eyes. Um, it just turned out that obviously, as the story that he just told, he just come back from Jordan and he had hyperpigmentation on his eyes, um, which she very thoroughly explained to me. Um, anyway, we were discussing that for probably about 15, 20 minutes on the train, um, and then it got to my stop at Fulham Broadway, and I was like, well, it's lovely to meet you, but this is my stop now. And Simon was like, oh, this is my stop too. And I was like, oh, this is strange. So we both got off the, the station together, and then both exited the station, and we're still talking, and then come out the station, and when we turn left, and then we turn right, and I was just thinking, oh my God. Where is this guy going? And I was like, where are you going? And he was like, oh, my girlfriend just lives down there on the right. And I was like, my dad just lives down there on the left. Um, we were living basically opposite each other. It was like one row yeah. apart, wasn't it? So um, it was crazy. Yeah. So we both said goodbye to each other. But Simon was like, make sure you check out my blog because that's what you were doing at yeah. the time. I left it probably about a week. And then I decided to go on to yeah. Simon's blog. And... Uh, <laughs> I was on my lunch break and I was sitting in the park and then I was like looking through and then I decided to comment on that, that spread that you just posted. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hi Simon, it's great to meet you the other day on the train. Um, just wondered what the cream was that you mentioned because I'd forgotten. <laughs> so then we decided to go for a drink later on that week. I think it was on the Friday and we went to yeah. the pub. Right? Like that was mutually yeah. convenient for both of us. Yeah. Like it was on the same road. Yeah. And, and what, did you think, what did you think the meetup was, Kim? Uh, like what do you think the intentions uh, I of thought them? it was a date because he <laughs> expressed it to be a date. I never expressed it to be a date. Apparently he hadn't stopped thinking about how crazy it was that we'd met and he hasn't stopped That's thinking so about true. it. Hasn't stopped thinking about it for a whole week. Well, because, because, because out of 8 million people in London, yeah. we were on the same tube. Be a bit colder with your emails next time. Same yeah. tube, same, ca uh, same carriage, yeah. We lived in, the, in, the, uh, in Fulham, in the same place. We literally lived a road opposite each other. Crazy times. I'm surprised you waited a week to contact me. Okay, so we've been living with each other now for two years and this is actually the second property that we've lived in now. Yeah. Um, I guess how we got here to this day, uh, we just became really good friends Like we after we initially met on the tube. Yeah. I actually was, I arranged to move some, in with someone else and it sort of fell through and, and he let me down and Kim was living with her dad at the time and we just said, look, why don't we 
why don't we live together? Yeah. And we thought if it just lived the two of us, if we lived together just the two of us, we'd probably kill each other. So we thought we, we should probably get some roommates. There's been quite a few. Yeah, times we've moved on that. Yeah. yeah, even with roommates. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's our story. Yeah. I guess like my technique of probably coping with vitiligo to begin with was just maybe just to try and ignore it. Maybe like in a, in a way that like ignorance is bliss. The less you know about it, the less time you're going to be spent worrying about it, which again, if stress is supposed to be a cause of vitiligo, you don't want that to be like a, a revolving like prophecy in that, in that respect. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I guess in a way you've kind of done the hard graph for me, like you've researched it. So you've, you've told me so much and informed me on so much. Um, do I let it, I don't know, consume my life in a way? No, because uh, I guess the way I like to deal with things is just in a really laid back approach. Um, I mean, but, it, that, is, that is funny between us, isn't it? Yeah. Is that, uh, on a, you know, in terms of on a scale of how much we, our skin is actually physically affected by vitiligo, yeah. yours is, is far worse than mine. I mean, what would you say the percentage of your body that is... For, 30%, 40% that's affected by vitiligo, do you think? I'd go with 30%. Yeah. Mo I mean, it's not like, it's on my knees, but it's not on the rest of my legs. Yeah. And I guess my arms, it's becoming more and more like yeah. apparent. The most interesting thing about it is, if stress is supposed to be a big factor in progressing it, and I'm not that stressed about it, whereas I'd say you probably are. Yeah. It's interesting that I've got most of it. Like, go, like, I don't, that doesn't yeah, even you, make sense. No, but yours is worse. Yours is worse. Yours is worse. Even yours is though worse I'm than not mine. stressing yeah. about it, and you don't really actively it. try to treat yeah. it or anything, do you? you? No. Would you say that you've? Would you say that you've accepted it? Yes, because in the way you have to accept it. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, I agree. Acceptance is a, is a huge part of having vitiligo. Yeah. You, you, I, I mean, you, initially, you I was completely distraught about the whole thing, and I hated it, and mm -hmm. I was really, really, like, it, it did knock my confidence, but then you, soon you just become immune to it, you accept it, like, it, in any process, I guess, you just, it, it neutralises you in a way. Um, Some people don't know. No. And that's why I think this is going to be good because people are going to see. Yeah. People are going to see. Uh, people will say to me, yeah, that it doesn't, that it's not, it's not very bad on me. I shouldn't. I've had multiple people say it that why am I even bothering going to Jordan to treat it? Why are you doing this? I'm why are you doing that? You know, you shouldn't even be worried about it. But it's, it's about getting to a, it's about getting to a stage that you that you can have a better standard of life. Yeah, it's about getting to a stage that you can you can feel more confident about yourself, and you know. Depression affects many different people and, and you know, vitiligo is just one thing that can contri contribute to, to depression. So when you look at, when you get up in the mirror every day and you look at yourself and you, and you don't see yourself or you see yourself as imperfect and, you, and, you see, and those things really, really affect you, anything that you can do to make that quality of life just a little bit better, just so that you don't have to think about it as much. Like girls, for example, can put makeup on and that's normal for a girl, I guess, to, to put makeup on and kind of do themselves up a bit. For, for guys, there are camouflage options for, for vitiligo, but I mean, if I had to put makeup on my face, uh, you know, when it was in its, its worst state, if I would have to put makeup on my face, that would have destroyed my self-esteem, even as a guy that I'm, I'm then wearing makeup. So I think it's the fact that what Jordan has done has, has opened my eyes to treatments that are, that are available and that generally do work. Everyone's different, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't work for everyone, but it, it just gives you a, it's given me a better quality of life and... I don't really have to think about it so much anymore, you know. Yeah. The stuff, the stuff I do now with the blog, and while I'm doing this, I'm I'm kind of going out and I'm maintaining it, and I am, you know, I'm interested in in, in the the vitiligo community that's out there, and the different bloggers that are now coming up and 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 doing and, and talking about different stuff and empowering people that have vitiligo, and it's getting so much more focus because of people like uh, Winnie Harlow. And even with Lee Thomas has done. Lee Thomas has done so much for for vitiligo. What, what for you? What would be the most interesting thing that I could I could bring by filming, by going out there and filming and vlogging the experience? What What would you like to, to, to see? Are you more interested in the vitiligo or in Jordan, the Middle East? Like what What is it you? Uh, so obviously, I'd be very interested in to know obviously your story and everything that you get up to and all your discoveries in vitiligo and all the different treatments in it. But I guess I've kind of been fully informed in that the last time you went. So mm -hmm. yeah. I guess anything new that you find, that would be really interesting. Um, but I guess because I know you personally, mm -hmm. uh, and I reckon just seeing how you grow. Oh. <laughs> 
in front of a camera, especially. Um, I know you're probably going to have a hard time tackling this to begin with, with mm. the camera. I think I'm going to be really curious to see how it all pans out for you and the people that you meet as well. Great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> the, the video blogging in Jordan was... Uh, it doesn't really seem to be anything like that out there. For people with, with vitiligo, there doesn't really seem to be... Like, people know about the treatment in Jordan, but it's really... It's not that well publicised. It's quite a small group of people that seem to... A relatively small group of people that seem to know about it. So I'm really doing this because I'm trying to raise awareness about, about the treatment because it's been so successful for me. Um, and, you know, it's something that I'll continue to do again and again, like return to Jordan, and hopefully it will continue to help my skin should it get worse in, in some periods of my life. I would like to give people a, a, a sort of introduction to what Jordan is and what the treatment is and they can actually make a decision whether this is for them. You know, I'm one of those people that's gone and done it with Professor Charles Reiter, and I think I spent around four, th around 4,000 euros, give or take, to, to go and do it. This time I'm doing it with a separate group in Germany, nothing to do with the professor whatsoever. I'm not using her, her creams, and uh, it's gonna be a new experience for me in that sense to see if I get as much success as I did last time. And generally I just like people to see what a difference it can make going out there to, to their self-esteem and to actually tackle the psychological aspects of vit vitiligo as well as just the cosmetic side of it as well.